Robert Harper Griswold, a ship's captain, had established a life for his wife and three daughters in this beautiful house in Old Lyme, Connecticut. Unfortunately, in 1882, Robert Harper died, and in short order, his wife and one daughter, leaving Florence and her sister Adele in financial straits. Florence did what was acceptable in those days to earn money. She took in boarders into this very large home. In 1899, artist Henry Ward Ranger stayed at the Grizzle House and thought it a great place to create an art colony. Henry Ward Ranger encouraged Child Hassan, and Hassan in turn influenced William Metcalf. Soon, other artists came, including Matilda Brown, Wilson Irvin, William Henry Howe, and in short time, a European-style art colony was created in Connecticut. Florence converted her family's formal parlor on the first floor into this large bedroom in anticipation of distinguished guests. And indeed, Florence did attract interesting guests. Woodrow Wilson, in the days when he was president of Princeton University, and his wife Ellen, who was an artist, stayed at the Griswold House. Mr. Wilson had this to say about his stay. People come and go. You no sooner get interested in them, and then they're off. And it's always the interesting ones who leave first.
Of all museums in Connecticut, this one gives me the nicest feeling. Uh, almost, especially here in the dining room, where you can almost feel Florence walk in with breakfast or dinner and can get the warmth of Connecticut, the beauty of this kind of interaction between artists. It has been said of Florence Griswold that although she embraced the idea of managing a rooming house and that she thoroughly enjoyed her guests, especially the artists, there were times when she would lock herself away in her room and in that privacy reminisce and remember her youth when her father assumed the financial and the maintenance of such a large house and provided for the family.
Uh, this is Edward Simmons, known for being part of the tent. The tent of a very famous uh, group of painters known particularly for Impressionism. A loose group of artists compiled an exhibit that opened in 1898 in New York. Each artist member signed an agreement to exhibit at every annual show and add new members only by a unanimous vote. All members were established artists. The reason for forming this group was to exhibit in a comfortable venue with a select group of like-minded artists with paintings that harmonized together. They became known as the Ten. The original members of the Ten, as they were named, included Charles Hassan, J. Alden Weir, John Thratchman, William Metcalf, Edmund Tarbell, Frank Benson, Joseph DeCamp, Thomas D. Wing, Edward Simmons, and Robert Reed.
painting, completed by William Metcalf in 1914, is part of an entry of the Florence Griswold Museum. William Metcalf visited Old Lyme in 1905 at the suggestion of a friend and artist, Child Hassan. Metcalf and his family began summering in Old Lyme in 1905. Unfortunately, in Old Lyme, his first wife Margarita and artist Robert Nespin ran away together creating scandal and entry. This painting, Summer at Hadlime, painted in 1943, features his second wife, Henrietta, and his daughter, Rosalind. After many years of welcoming guests, the house began to show its age. A group of artists took on the project of restoring the house and redecorating some of the rooms at their own expense and with the labor of their hands. A wonderful gesture of love and respect for Florence and all she had provided. This modern gallery, designed by Centerbrook Architects and opened in 2002, showcases the museum's collections and current exhibits, a brief orientation film, visitors' amenities, and the shop.
Of all the museums that I have visited in the world, the Florence Griswold has to be the most welcoming and comfortable. Whether you bring your art materials to paint in the flower gardens, browse the collection of first class paintings, or just spend your time sitting in the grass by the river, this is the place. The relaxed atmosphere created by its founder Florence still lives on. I have spent many days studying the collection and painting on the grounds. I recommend it to all artists and to lovers of art. Respectfully submitted, Dr. Michael Sula.